when you as the back end calls read that's how you read data from the kernel right you read on a socket connection and as you read you will the kernel will decrypt the content and it will transfer it to you if you write something you are writing the plain text to the socket which which is basically a copy operation and then as you write it the kernel will decry will encrypt it and then send it to the network right so that's how it works decryption and encryption of tls usually happens in the user space i.e you often reference some library in your code whether the front end or the back end and you just don't know it or just abstract it away from you right and uh, that's even open ssl or or other libraries wolf ssl and other other kind of libraries that does the encryption and decryption and does the tls handshake or figure out if the server supports tls 1.2 versus 1.3 and does all of that stuff right so the tls is done in user space today most of the time but i want to talk about the effort to bring tls down to the kernel for visibility reasons for performance reasons and and the different modes that the kernels can support tls if allowed right and this is called ktls or kernel tls fascinating stuff i love talking about this stuff let's jump into it all right so i am going to reference this in the show notes if you're interested so this is the linux kernel documentation kernel tls offload so they were offloading the tls from user space which which is where it's being done down to the kernel but we have different modes to achieve that so let's read through this part linux kernel provides tls connection offload infrastructure once a tcp connection is an established state user space can enable the tls upper layer protocol so there's a new thing that has been invented right so a new layer and the kernel you'll notice the kernel works on this concept of layers which is an abstraction that that can allow the kernel to do code execute code at every single layer and that other layer just passes the output to the next layer it's just how mm, linux does things so this t uh, ulp or upper layer protocol the tls upper layer protocol and then it can install cryptographic connection state so this is very very interesting to understand uh, the way tls works is you establish the tls handshake and as we talked about it we exchange the keys right we try to uh, do the to determine the key and once you get the keys and the certificate what we need to do is to teach the kernel about these keys it's very important to know that kernel does not do the handshake based on this protocol you as a user space is still responsible to do the handshake because you have more context at that layer okay? but once the keys has been established and then of course you would set you would you would set these parameters by calling a specific uh, kernel function to set that socket with that keys so there is a copy operation that is happening from user space to kernel space to copy the keys and what cipher are you using and then once you're what well, that's done the socket is marked as an encrypted socket so that's the, the gist of this whole uh, operation of how it's working and right? it's essentially just doing the handshake of course the tcp handshake and once you're doing the handshake you do the tls handshake and then you exchange the keys and then the user space sets that key on the connection and then the kernel will have the keys essentially so let's talk about the different three modes that ktls supports right? the first one is tls software mode or the software crypto mode here the kernel does the encryption and decryption because it has the keys from the connection right because the user space set them 
instead of the user space doing it, the kernel's doing the actual encryption and decryption for every single packet it, it receives, right? But how is it done is when you, as the backend, calls read. That's how you read data from the kernel, right? You read on a socket connection. And as you read, you will, the kernel will decrypt the content and it will transfer it to you. Okay? If you write something, you are writing the plain text to the socket, which, which is basically a copy operation. And then as you write it, the kernel will, will encrypt it and then send it to the network, right? So that's how it works. Right? It's just what we're what, what we changed here with the kernel. The kernel is doing the encryption and decryption based on who is reading and writing. So, but technically, if you think about it, we're still using the host CPU to do this operation. Nothing changed. The only thing that has changed here is who's doing the encryption. Instead of the user process doing the encryption and decryption, we're having the kernel doing the encryption and decryption. And if you think about it, reads and writes are now slower, right? As I'm reading and as I'm writing, and I'm, by the way, this concept, I, I have I have these, you know, the, if, you, if you want interested to learn more about operating systems and socket management and programming, uh, check out my OS course, hit to OS course, don't win to get a copy. But I talk about all of that stuff. This is a little bit of a, the, the intermediate to advance, right? If, if you're interested to follow up. But uh, with the software crypto mode, the kernel is doing the actual encryption and decryption, okay? There is another mode that is called the TLS hardware mode. So this is called packet-based NIC offload mode or the hardware mode. Here... We still have the TCP IP done in the kernel, but the encryption and decryption is done in the NIC itself, at the device. Because as you, as you receive packets from the network, it goes into your network, internet, uh, inter, uh, network interface controller, right? And then when, when that network interface controller gets the packet, it just DMAs it all the way to the kernel. And that's how it works. With this approach, with the TLS hardware approach, it can now essentially decrypt the content as it's received or encrypt it if it's going all the way out to the network and just hand it over to the kernel. Right? So what is the beauty of this? The beauty of this is now we're offloading the encryption decryption to the device, which is our beautiful precious cpu the host cpu is now free we're not doing encryption anymore this is really powerful now the second mode that is powerful then yeah? because now uh yeah we, instead of just having the kernel doing the decryption and encryption we actually having the whole the way the nick doing the encryption and decryption so the kernel will get plain good old decrypted uh, packets like plain text, right? With a flag that says, okay, this, uh, this packet has been decrypted. And the final one, which is full TCP NIC offload mode, which is TLS hardware record, that is when the NIC firmware itself doing everything, including TCP and TLS, right? So the kernel has no visibility at all as what's going, right? So instead of having the TCP, uh, the, the kernel doing TCP IP stack, all this socket management uh, or, or the, uh, the TCP man management, we have the NIC doing everything there. We have the NIC doing that as long as, of course, it supports that, right? And uh, there is there's some advantages and disadvantages for this approach where we have the NIC doing everything and the kernel is just a pass-through in this particular case, but... The disadvantage is, of course, you don't, you cannot no longer do any firewalling capabilities. You cannot do any uh, filtering, packet filtering, all of this just gone, right? Because uh, it's too late. You just receive data at this point. The, the filtering happen, happens at the NIC level, right? Not at the, uh, the kernel level. And I think I've read somewhere where you can actually 
inject code to interrupt the neck of loading and do code there i don't know how how accurate is that or, or if that's even possible but yeah uh, if you think about it ip tables and all the ebbf logic all happens in the kernel so if the kernel doesn't have knowledge about what is going on it, does, it cannot do that stuff all right how about we go through one example here tx which is we're writing right so whether this is the front end writing a request or the back end writing a response 